keep once you have all the chemicals, keep OMPG and the, the enzyme in the freezer. Start by mixing all of the reaction, all of the reagents one at a time. Follow the I used a, a sigma quality control procedure test pack, and this told me how I was supposed to follow the chemical, how I was supposed to do all the mixes and the calculations that I needed to take. Do all the measuring in a electric balance or with a micro pet for accurate result. Most reagents can be used right out of the box, but OMPG and mercaptoethanol were the exception. Mercaptoethanol is a health hazard and needs to be mixed under a vent hood. OMPG needs to be ground with a mortal and pestle to help it dissolve. OMPG also needs to be um, also needs to be mixed with a with a vortex to shake it up and dissolve the, the amount quicker. And placed in a temp bath up with 37 degrees. OMPG is very hard to dissolve and these, these three help do that. Other, um, other concentrations of OMPG can then be done with two resolutions. I did many assays but used all, only nine different concentrations. When all the mixes are finished, there will be five reagents. Reagent B, my buffer. Reagent C, OMPG. Reagent D, magnesium chloride. Reagent E, mercaptoethanol. And reagent F, my enzyme. And this one needs to be mixed right before an assay is run. Combine all of the reagents except for the OMPG into a three milliliter reaction mix. Mix these by inversion. Inversion is flipping up to the side of the intestine. Make three replicates of this three milliliter reaction mix. A fourth test would be ran as a blank. Now this one has all the chemicals in it, all the reagents in it, except for OMPG and the enzyme. Start by setting the spectrophotometer to 410 nanometers. And place the blank inside the spectrophotometer. Set the spectrophotometer to zero and blank out the spec to zero then remove the blank. Place in, mix 0.10 milliliters of ONPG and place this into the reaction mix. Mix this by inversion and mix this by inversion and record the absorbance readings for the next five minutes every 20 seconds. Place the blank back into the spectrophotometer and record this absorbance. Repeat the process for all of the reaction rates for all the reaction mixes as well as the blank at different concentrations. Follow the four-step procedure of converting absorbance readings to reaction rate. How to convert absorbance readings to reaction rate. During each assay, record the, record, the, record the absorbance every 20 seconds for five minutes, as I said. Here's a graph of um, one of the tests I did in the absorbance readings for the five minutes. Step two. Using Beer's Law, convert the absorbance readings to the miller con millimolar concentration of O and P. There's Beer's Law, and here's another graph. This is absorbance readings to millimolar concentration. Step three, use the results from step two to calculate the amount of OMP, produ OMP produced per minute. In this, in this graph, you see a straight line and then it evens out. The, in a spectro when a spectrophotometer is used, the, the, the reaction, the absorbance readings turn out shaky and then they even out. So the first part isn't really accurate. Step four, use the results from step three as well as the amount of enzyme <coughs> protein in the reaction mix to calculate the millimolar concentration of OMP produced per minute per milligram of the enzyme. This becomes the reaction rate. How to apply Beer's Law. Suppose you are one minute and 40 seconds into a acid. The absorbance reading is 0.121. What is the concentration of OMP in this in this reaction mix at that point. 
using Beer's law, where A is the absorbent, which is 0.121 in this case, uh, the Greek letter for E, millimolar coefficient, millimolar extinction coefficient, and I got 3.47 from the sigma test procedure that I used, and length, the path length that the light travels through, which would be the cuvette that's placed into the spectrophotometer, which is 1 centimeter. Here's the equation. My any result would be 0 0.035 millimoles of OMP. Here's my summary of my result. Um, each of these bars represent a different, different concentration of ONPG that I use. Um, there's, you can see three different colors. Each color is a different enzyme, a different amount of enzyme I put into the, the reaction itself. As you can see, each day, the each each color is roughly the similar. The data shows that the reaction rates were dependent on the enzyme, even though they were even though the reaction rates were calculated to compensate for the differences in enzyme reaction enzyme concentration. These results also show that the reaction was not dependent on OMPG, but on the substrate, but on the enzyme. These results are contrary to expected result, but that the reaction rate would be dependent on the OMPG. of what was expected. As you saw in my graph, the, the results were uneven. As the concentration went up, the, result sh the reaction rate should have gone up, giving me this curve. My results went this way. research data was contrary to what was expected, I achieved the goal of, of doing a beta galactic assay as a prerequisite for doing research into gene expression. The data was contrary to ex expectations, but all this shows is that making accurate measurements and accurate um, calculations is important. While it was also, while it was, while it's always possible that the the data contrary to expectations shows that the expectations were unjustified. No such claim is made here. Possible improvements that I would have made was find better ways to dissolve my own PG by possibly contacting other experts and their ways of dissolving the information. Future studies, basically I would want to get into more in LACC and actually do a LACC enzyme assay using this gene. And also calculate KM and Vmax and learn more about them. When I was reading the article, I saw something gives free energy. I want to learn what that is. And study acid and base chemistry to find out how buffers keep a pH constant. Um, my acknowledgments. I want to thank Dr. Claiborne Glover, who gave me guidance in this topic. and. Any questions I have, he always answered. Dr. Linda Hensel at Mercer for letting me use her lab as well as providing all my, my equipment. Bernice Thompson, who is a lab assistant there for Dr. Hensel, she got all the equipment I needed whenever I needed it. And last, I'd like to thank my dad who picked me up from school whenever I needed to go or or stayed with me and gave me guidance whenever I was frustrated. Thank you.